So a couple weeks ago, I released a review, a positive review, of the Muggo Electric Travel Mug. And of course, as karma would have it, within days of releasing that video, the battery failed. And I uh, ended up having to go through a process to get a new battery. It was actually quite seamless. I'm going to take you through what happened and the process to get a new one. And at the end, I'm actually going to tear apart the old one and see if I could find anything wrong with it. So here's the journey. So this is a simulation of what was happening when my battery failed. I would put it on the charger and it would just flash red uh, and off, red and off. I didn't get video of it, so I'm just simulating it here with a couple of, uh, of pictures. So I tried several different things to try to revive it. I plugged the charging base in and out a few times, tried charging it with and without the mug on it. Nothing seemed to work. Eventually it got into this state where you would put the battery on and it just uh, acts like it doesn't need to be charged, but it would be completely dead. I had only had my mug for about a month, so I figured they'd give me a free one if I could find out where to go. Muggo is kind of a small company, so I didn't have a lot of confidence I'd be able to find them. But when I searched the web, this is what I found. First, kudos to Ember uh, for getting their ad at the top of a Muggo search. But then I came across two web pages, the Muggo.co and the MuggoCoffee.com. I ended up going through MuggoCoffee.com and uh, had some success there. So once I got to their web page, I just uh, scrolled all the way to the bottom. And in the lower right, there's a link for a warranty claim form. I clicked on that and the claim form came up and then uh, filled in all my information. One thing to note is uh, in the order number where it says order number if Amazon, it's a required field. So you got to put your order number uh, regardless of where you got it from. I got mine from Best Buy. So I just uh, put in my Best Buy order number and all the other information and press submit. This is where I became a little bit skeptical because I didn't hear back from them right away. There was no automated email that said, hey, we received your request. And I actually uh, had to wait for two days, but eventually I got this email back um, that said, uh, you know, sorry for your problem, send us an address and we'll take care of it. And that's what happened. Uh, sent them my mailing address. Uh, they came back and said, you'll have your battery in a few days. And, uh, you know, no tracking number, nothing high tech like that. But uh, lo and behold, three or four days later, a uh, battery uh, showed up via UPS at my front door. So here's my fabulous unboxing video of my new battery. Came in a black box. Uh, I cracked that thing open and put it on the charger. And lo and behold, it started charging right away. You can see the four lights are on there, which means it's uh, working well. And, uh, yeah, it started charging up. Uh, you can see the other one, there were no lights. That thing was dead. So now that I have my replacement, which is charging over here, I'm thinking I'd like to deconstruct this one to see if I can possibly repair it, which I think is a long shot. Uh, there's a couple of ways to break into this thing. There's no obvious seams, but there's either going to be a way to break into this by removing this rubber um, covering along the bottom. There might be some screws or something underneath there. Or I feel like this plastic part here is an insert. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a uh, like a some sort of a screwdriver and try to try to see if I can pry this panel off and see what's inside. So I'll start with a small screwdriver. Uh, this one's probably too small, but I want to just see if I can get in here first with something really small. And yeah, I can already see him gouging away at it. So I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on it. Okay, there. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to peel away. So let me go ahead and just peel this part off. Hopefully there will be a screw or something under here, but... Oh yeah, look at that. There are screws. Okay. So I got four screws. Really tiny screws. Look like they're Phillips head. So let me see if I can find a Phillips head screwdriver. These screws are in here incredibly tight. Uh, every one I got out, I felt lucky to get out and wasn't sure I was going to be able to get the next one out. But eventually I got all four of them out of there.
Now, let's see if I can take this part out or what those four screws, removing those four screws did for me. There's no obvious seam around here. And it didn't really loosen up anything on the bottom. So I'm thinking that maybe there's something in here that's screwed into there that's not accessible from this direction. So now it looks like I have to remove this rubber. Partway through removing that rubber pad, I did put it back on the base to see if it would have uh, been magically fixed, but uh, no luck. It's going to cut into it. Well, that worked, and I don't see a screw in there. Okay, next kind of kind of shot what I was hoping to get into it with. I'm looking for any other seam here, anything else that might be removable. How in the oh here oh <laughs> I figured it out that screw is holding on the whole top those screws are holding on the whole top plate okay okay now we're making some headway <laughs> okay now let's see if we can figure out I kind of want to make sure I got the Oh, it smells. It smells bad. It smells like a burnt capacitor, to be honest with you guys. Yeah, this thing is toasted. That's interesting. That was perfectly sealed in there, all that air. Uh, now that it's out, I can really smell it. Okay, we got some kind of a gasket here. That's good to know that it's pretty much waterproofed. Yeah, it's got four magnets. Uh, now the question is, do I really want to pull this thing off and see what's going on? And of course the answer is yes. So let's do it. All right. Wow. Okay. Put that one out. Shouldn't be any chance of electrocution on something this small, so I'm being somewhat careless. Wow, okay. Yeah, this is definitely not just a battery, which you kind of knew because it had those flashing lights uh, for charging. And there had to be a charge controller in there. Um, that. This looks a little suspicious. Oh, yeah. Wow, those magnets are strong. We got what looks like a little heat damage here. And then this, com God dang it. <laughs> this component here um, looks to be a little damaged. I don't know if you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's, a white residue on whatever this is. Uh, yeah, so it smells like burned electrical components in here. Something got fried. It's not super obvious. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with the amount of electronics that are inside a battery or this battery. Uh, I think this component here might be to blame with uh, what looks to be maybe a little bit of heat damage on the battery. So that component probably got a little overheated and uh, eventually failed, which led to the failure of the battery. Um, boy, wish I knew how to prevent that in the future. But uh, it looks like I'm not going to be making any headway on actually repairing this battery. So I am going to try to put this back together and just make sure that through all this monkeying around, I didn't jar something to the point of fixing it. 
Well, I did put the thing back together and uh, put it back on the charging base uh, just in case by some miracle it suddenly would start to work and I could have two batteries, but of course, no luck, uh, put it down and uh, nothing happened at all. So that'll be going back in the recycle bin. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you found something useful in here or at least found the battery uh, teardown interesting. Uh, we'll see you around.